Hey, welcome into the Irish NFL show. We are, uh, well, today is the Broncos against the Jaguars here from Wembley Stadium. 1.30 Ireland-UK kickoff. The game is on Virgin Media in the Republic, ITV and NI. Delighted to be joined by Colin Cronin. Brian's popping in during the game as well. Uh, and we've got a special guest to kick off the show this morning. A guy I've spoke to quite a bit, uh, Maharaja, who is uh, an NFL expert, correspondent, host, in the Middle East, which I'm sure you can have a game very soon. Oh. Here, warm welcome. How, how are you doing? Thank you, good. I'm trying to survive the cold weather. You know, it's never that, <laughs> it's never that cold in, in uh, back home. But, uh, you know, uh, help me out with the accent, guys, I'm, as well as I'm struggling. But thanks for having me. Uh, first off, if you're not aware, if you haven't seen Maher on social media, yeah. you covered the Super Bowl last year. You're in Munich in a few weeks. Yeah. What has your NFL journey been like over the last month? My first football game was the Super Bowl. I have never been to a football game till last February. And I have been following the sports for 20 years. Back home when there was no YouTube, no, no basic stuff to teach you, no social media. So I learned it my way. And now we're trying to increase awareness within the Middle East community and hopefully within the NFL to increase the fan base in the Middle East. Well. Well, we had an awesome time at the training camp for the Broncos yeah. on Thursday and Friday. And here is some interview footage that Colin found over the last few days. We are here with Brandon McManus, Broncos kicker. Brandon, with that McManus name, do you have Irish or Scottish heritage? <laughs> yes, I have uh, actually 48 family members coming over from Kilkenny mostly. From Kilkenny? Uh, yeah, from uh, Ireland coming over, so uh, looking forward to that. I haven't met any of them before, so uh, it, it'll be a blast. And you know, I know they've been following my career so far, and. Uh, you know, I'm honored and excited to meet them and them come to watch me play. Well, there you go. I didn't realize you had the uh, the Irish connection. And uh, have you actually made it over to, to Ireland yourself? I've never yet. I, I, I dream about it. I still want to do it. Uh, you know, my wife and bring my, my three boys to, to experience it. It'd be amazing. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to welcome you at some point. Thank you. For, for you, I suppose, obviously, look, travel all the time. It, is this really that different? Does it matter that it's on a different continent? No, it, no, it doesn't matter. It'll be exciting for me. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of the people in the stands will know what I do more than anyone else <laughs> uh, on the field. So, uh, you know, looking forward to that. But no, it's uh, you know, obviously it's different. Uh, I, I know this is a little more moist and, and wet over here uh, with the fields and stuff. But, uh, you know, I have extra cleats and you know, ready to go. And, uh, and looking to see, you know, but I'm excited more than anything just to play over here in front of uh, these fans. And you grew up uh, playing soccer. Yep. Was, was Wembley something that, that featured? Were you are you aware of the, the history that Wembley has here and I suppose around, like in Europe in terms of FA Cup finals and for being the national team? Yeah, I, I don't know specifically all the history. Obviously, I've watched the national team play here many years. I know they, they built it based off of the Olympics and, and Olympic Village there. And uh, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I played soccer growing up. I watched, uh, obviously, the Premier League uh, on TV and stuff, but I don't have as much history behind soccer. I, fortunately, I think I made the right decision in 10th grade to stop playing soccer and chose kicking uh, as my better career it's worked path. worked out pretty it well for you. Out. So, yeah. uh, but no, like you said, I'm, uh, I'm excited. We went to the Tottenham match last night, uh, which was amazing to experience it live in person. And uh, like I said, just excited to play in front of the fans here. Appreciate the time. Good luck on yeah, Sunday. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, welcome back in, uh, Brandon McManus, Kilkenny, yeah? I mean, that's interesting. 48 cousins on their way over from Kilkenny, Michael. Uh, they're more used to going to Croke Park, but they will be <laughs> in the hallowed turf of Wembley Arena today. If Cody has any say now, now that he's out, they'll be back from Croke Park for a while anyway. Anyway, if you're watching from Kilkenny, hi everyone. Uh, here, before we jump on the Jaguars chat, you seem to be a Chicago Bears fan. Yep. Uh, how, how is that going for you? Are you enjoying Justin Fields at the minute? Well, uh, I think everyone in Chicago is enjoying Justin Fields. You know, we never had this QB hype, you know, since Hawaii. Maybe minus the few years we got from Jay Cutler. He's a Broncos <laughs> fan, uh, player, but anyway. But everyone is excited to see what Justin Fields brings to the table, especially with the last game we saw on Monday Night Football against the Patriots. He can run, maybe he can pass with a little bit of help. Maybe the Chicago Bears can compete, especially now with number 12 leaving Green Bay soon. I don't know about that, but why not Chicago Bears? It's interesting, Colin. Um, we're we're going to jump on Trevor Lawrence now because obviously you've got the Jaguars here as the home team. Yeah. Still no branding in the background with the Jaguars, but I can assure you behind us, there's a load of Jaguars stuff. First off, Colin, we didn't get a chance to see 
Lawrence this weekend uh, in training because he only came in on Friday. Um, I mean, I said it last week in the show, I think they should have beat the Giants, and that, that was on the offense. Lawrence went 22 or 43 last week. Too much inconsistency. Uh, what's your thoughts on him? Because it's an interesting dynamic both these teams have. Yeah, both of them, two and five, both probably a little disappointed with the QB play thus far, you'd have to say, for different reasons. Look, I think Trevor Lawrence has flashed, and he's flashed a bit more this year than he did last year. We were here to see him get it, uh, the win last year, obviously not here, but in in London in uh, at Spurs with the, the last minute field goal, uh, when Urban Meyer didn't give out game balls, that was a, an interesting one. Very different <laughs> Jaguars team this year. Um, he's still probably looking for the complete game. I think that's what's interesting. But look, um, you're talking about Fields. Fields had a kind of a breakout game against the Patriots. Could could Trevor Lawrence have a breakout game against the Broncos? That's that's possible. And I suppose, Mario, I'm interested in your thoughts on, on Lawrence. Because the Bears, for your Bears, last year, like, there was a lot of talk where it might go up and get a QB. So were you watching, like, the QBs to see who might fall? I mean, it's obviously Lawrence was always going number one. But, like, did were, were you at all intrigued by what he could potentially offer? Look, and you have to give him some time as well. You know, this is the second year and he's, he has a new coach. He's trying to learn the system and help is coming. You guys have seen what Travis Etienne has done for him for the past week. He's really excited about having his uh, friend back. And, you know, Travis Lawrence can make any play. You know, I'm not worried about Lawrence. Uh, I think with Coach Peterson uh, being the coach, he's probably the most confident one to bring up a QB. So, you know, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see how this dynamic in London works for the Jaguars because when we were with the NFL meetings, there were questions about the Jaguars being a home team, you know, here and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to see Trevor Lawrence for the first time, I guess, tomorrow. It was interesting last year, that Dolphins game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's tomorrow. It's time to report. It's all good. It was interesting last year in the Dolphins game in Tottenham to see the... Hey, look, there's a lot of Dolphins fans in the UK at least, yeah. but there was quite a lot of Jaguars fans and I have pretty much said this week and I know we've agreed on this column that uh, this is pretty much Trevor Lawrence's rookie season I'm not counting year one with uh, with the head coach he had Urban Meyer and it's one of those things I think one thing we can touch on very quickly is you know Christian Kirk Christian Kirk went in for this massive deal from the Cardinals in the offseason uh, he's I think he's, he's being targeted a lot and he's getting open a lot but Lawrence isn't getting the ball down to him do you expect on Sunday to see maybe more of a dynamic Jaguars offense or what's your expectations as an analyst and also as a fan on Sunday? Look, for the Jaguars, I think they have the, the key elements to win any game. They have the running game. With, I'm, I'm really excited about Travis here. I don't know about you boys. <laughs> but if you look even at the Jaguars, they traded away... Um, uh, James uh, Robinson to sh show Travis Etienne and the Jaguars that they believe in this guy. So Travis Etienne is a key uh, all, uh, player also on the defense side. Uh, they have really some key players as well who can make some plays. The offensive line are really growing. So, you know, with, with, with the matchup coming up with the Broncos, they are not, by the way, far away from the um, Titans. The Titans are two games ahead of them. So maybe if they win this game, they might uh, win another game. I think they're playing soon against Tennessee. So I'm really interested to see what tomorrow's game bring from a Jaguars perspective, are they going to compete or or is it uh, another uh, building uh, year for them? Yes, yeah. and Colin, uh, a lot of talk of Robinson being traded and Peterson said he wasn't having a fire sale, it wasn't a get-go. Okay, he was not going to probably be there next year's contract was up, but to get a conditional sixth rounder for a running back who's experienced in this league, I understand, and I'm excited to see Travis Eddy in the yeah. Um But for me, it's like, Peterson goes in at the same record as a Hackett. They're both two and five. Do you think privately he's thinking, oh, that this season, you know, maybe it's better to build based on that because they don't have a lot of depth now at that position. Hopefully, and I hope that Eddie has a great day on Sunday and does not go down at any point this season. You never want to see anybody get injured, but they're playing with fire a little bit there, aren't they? In terms of if he goes down, then. Well, I think I think Dougie P probably knows he's playing with house money a little bit, right? Because he last year was so bad that he knows he's got a few years, right? So even if they were to have a losing season, he's going to get another year. I think the Robinson thing probably came down to last year. Last week he took his fewest number of snaps um, in the league. I think maybe he was worried about maybe like how it would play out in the locker room. So better to have the young guys there, you, uh, young QB, 
young running back who Jamar mentioned, they are good friends, they played together yeah. in college. He's probably hoping on that kind of Burrow, Jamar Chase type relationship. And I think he maybe wanted that to, to flourish. One thing maybe Mike, we haven't talked about so far that it was worth discussing is the Jaguars front seven on the defense. Yeah. The Broncos have had a lot of struggles on the O-line, particularly on the interior. The, the Jags front seven are really, really impressive and they can change that up. They can move guys inside, put them outside. I think that is something to keep an eye on tomorrow. And the Broncos are in a situation where their quarterback is not fully fit. You know, he's he's not. I, I would say Wilson, but the Broncos won't confirm this either way. He's probably 80, 85%. So that defense getting ahead is going to be a, a big, big task for the Jaguars and, and an important one on Sunday. And, and look, Wilson, even if he's 50%, he's a dangerous player, right? I mean, everyone uh, admires Wilson. I know many, many people back home in the Middle East have switched to become a Broncos fan because of Wilson. Really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, we have a huge fan base of Broncos in the in, in back home Middle East. Huge, right? And now they're asking me to cover the game tomorrow. I don't know. I'm just trying to enjoy the game. But anyway, so the Broncos defense, the Jaguars defense can be the Broncos uh, a day very difficult, you know, especially if you if they make, bring in different coverage and stuff and they can uh, confuse Russell Wilson and you know the drama is cooking at the running back position as well for them with Melvin Gordon, Latavius Murray yeah. I mean, something is being uh, uh, you know, something is not clicking in the Broncos side, I don't know what it is, but they have all this, uh, the, the players to make it happen but from a Jaguars perspective they might win this tomorrow, right? Yeah, and we'll get our game picks to the end, but I'll get your game pick in a second. It's it's funny, um, that's a really interesting point about the Broncos run game, and we'll talk maybe Colin about this later on in the, on, on the broadcast, but they barely got the run going against the Jets last week, and I think it's a massive factor. And you said the TV is Murray. Yeah. We've seen him play for the Saints two yeah. weeks ago in Tottenham. I mean, the guy literally got off the plane in America, was brought back to Denver, and now he's back in London again. Yeah. His family or his wife or whatever must love him right now. He's not even at home. Broncos have been here since Tuesday. Jaguars got in yesterday, so the Broncos are arguably, you, you, you could say, more acclimatized based on that there. But the reality is, Vikings Saints, Saints came in early, lost the game. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk very briefly to Maher about his job, and maybe about the... the Welcome back in to the Irish NFL show from Wembley Stadium. Colin Cronin, Michael McQuitt, Maharaja from NFL Arabia in the Middle East, covering the NFL in the Middle East. Great to meet you in person, man. We didn't get a chance to talk in LA. I felt really, really bad about it last year. Uh, talk to us about this, because we always get this question when we go to the States. Oh, do you think there'll ever be a franchise in the UK? Do you think Dublin could get a game in Ireland? Like We obviously are very fortunate to have the college game in Ireland now, but you should come to next year, the Notre Dame Navy game. He's definitely going to come. Um, tell us this. What's, what's your thoughts on the expansion of the NFL? The NFL obviously wants to grow and grow and grow. Do you think a game in the Middle East could be in the future? I mean, we were sitting, what, three weeks out from a World Cup in the Middle East? I mean, that's incredible. It's an amazing experience. Um, what's your thoughts on maybe having a game in the NFL in the future? Look, I think we are on the right path to at least increase awareness about the game in the Middle East. Um, number one, uh, there is a sports channel that covers uh, the American football uh, and they have seven games at least a week. Uh, there are also people playing uh, American football in Egypt, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Morocco. And I was shocked the other day when I learned that there are flag football for ladies in oh. Egypt and in Morocco and soon coming up in Jordan. So now there is a huge interest coming up from the Middle East about American football. So why not, you know, maybe soon we can have not maybe the American football game, but maybe the Super Bowl. It's oh, right. OK. Happen. Well, I'll tell you what, the time difference might work better there. It might. Or we could do it in Australia at 12 and anyone in Australia watching this day. No, I think it's awesome. And I would happily call him take the hit to go to Abu Dhabi or Dubai or somewhere to watch a game. I mean, that would be awful. I mean, I would hate that. that I'd love that. It'd be great. Um, Mahar, it's obviously awesome to meet you in person, man, and just to chat some ball. Just finally, can you maybe give us your game pick tomorrow? Like, you know, you're sitting beside two Broncos fans. Yeah, I know. Who's going to win this game? Jaguars, Broncos or something? Look, Anna, I'm a huge fan of Travis Etienne back from his Clemson days. And what he did last week, around 120 yards, one touchdown, and especially that long run, he was about to score a TD on it. I'm gonna go Jaguars, guys. You know, That's fine. let's be realistic here. The Broncos <laughs> have some issues. Wilson is not healthy. At the same time, the running back drama. Although I have Moray in my fantasy lineup, I don't know if it will work or not. It's a risk. 
but uh, I'm gonna go with Jaguars. Hopefully, uh, Travis Lawrence show us some of his magic, and uh, let's see how it goes. That was the quote of the week yesterday. We were outside the hotel. Latavius Murray walks past, and you said. I have him in my fantasy team. Yeah, yeah. That was so funny, man. Oh, here, awesome to meet you. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow, and obviously a big shout out to everyone that follows you online and yeah, yeah. Uh, for all the fans over there. I hope you get a game soon or yeah. some sort of added exposure. And I will see you in Munich in a few weeks. Yes. Maybe we can do like a you know Muller corner situation why outside not? of football. Why, why but uh, here, thanks so much, man. Really, Thank really you for cool. having me, and please feel free to, be, to visit us in the Middle East. Coming up next, we're going to talk some Broncos. That's going to be fun. I hope. Uh, see you soon. Broncos Jaguar Sunday 1.30, Virgin Media, ITV in the UK. Uh, obviously we're both Broncos fans, but we're going to be as completely impartial here as possible. <laughs> uh, we've got Brandon Cristal from KOA Radio. They're one of the, well, the main radio station in Colorado. Look at the Broncos as well. Brandon, uh, we've met you over recent years. Good to meet you in person and, and welcome to London. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I've had so much fun. This is how my voice sounds. So uh, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge to see how we get to tomorrow where I know I'm gonna enjoy myself the rest of the day, see a soccer match, and then I have to do a radio show leading into the game. I do the pre-game, pre-pre-pre-pre-game show on Sundays normally before we get into all of our different shows, so I'm actually four shows out. But with the time change, it goes me right into our main network pre-game show, right into kickoff. So we've been the Broncos partner for 53 years. I have not worked there for all of that, um, but rather just a few. Uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna drink a lot of tea today maybe not yell very much at the soccer match, and then hopefully see a great football game tomorrow, where I think a lot of people would like to see the Broncos win. Probably yeah. how I sign tomorrow after the game, you know, <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, Brian, look, the, the Broncos made the decision to come in early. Um, the, say, uh, the Jags obviously only came in yesterday. In terms of what you've seen and comparing it, obviously you're on the ground in Denver, comparing it to uh, a week of training back in Denver, was it pretty much standard? I think the football part, for the most part, was uh, because you can only do football practice a few ways. Now, the Broncos, in general, have been light, lighter in their practice week, really, since training camp started. Nathaniel Hackett is big on regeneration and feeling better and doing all these things to keep your body going uh, and, and not have as much wear and tear during the week and during the season. And hopefully, it'll last till the end of the year. Some people have been critical of that decision, especially in the preseason, not play games. I could go either way because we saw the Rams do it and win a Super Bowl. The Vikings look fine. They approach the same way. Niners, Dolphins, lots of teams are doing this. All these guys kind of tied together. Uh, the Packers are struggling, but I don't think preseason had anything to do with that. So, I mean, it just takes time for guys to get on the same page with people at times like Aaron Rodgers, his new receivers, Russell Wilson, and his new receivers. But the, the Wednesday, Thursday, and most of Friday was pretty much the same. Tuesday when the team plane landed, players got to adjust their body clocks and, and go sightsee and everything, and they've gotten to do a lot of that at night too in terms of checking out London. And they don't go away for training camp, right? Almost no teams do now. They, they practice at their facilities. I think 22 of the 32 practice in the preseason and stay in a hotel, but then you can go home and whatever. It's like two weeks, right? So this gives them a full week where almost no players have spouses or significant others, lots of other family, the same friends and family can come. So they get to just be together, travel around, and hopefully get to know each other. And that bond translates to the field. Well, it's funny, you must be you must be watching this uh, show or listening to the podcast because me and this guy here have an argument about the whole preseason elements. Okay. And I thought, and I, I will, will not focus on this, but I, my, my viewpoint was, I thought with Wilson going in, we needed to get more players out of him, like get embedded into that team. I know preseason, preseason, and we could argue about this, but we'll argue about it all preseason next year. Brandon, look, more importantly, game in London this weekend, and it's not what it used to be in the sense of, oh, a team's coming to London. I right. think back in the day when you had one game, we were all like, oh, but like this is a game where two and five, $245 million quarterback comes in. All of us included, you know, big expectation. Of course, it's going to take time, but this is more than a game tomorrow. We're going into a bye week next week for the Broncos. It's a huge game on Sunday. Yeah, they need to win and it'd be nice to see them get on track offensively, right? A 12 9 win helps. It, it counts, right? They need wins to just show that they're trending in the right direction and to get back on track, whatever that looks like. We know how difficult the back half of their schedule is going to be, certainly on paper, based on what we're seeing from these teams. Maybe the Rams have come back a little bit. 
Chargers, Raiders. We'll, we'll see, but we know those games were winnable before. Chiefs and Ravens is going to be tough, right? Carolina feels winnable. They just beat the heck out of the box. So, I believe not being able to hear me on the bus, not me. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to see the offense get going. I think a lot of people would. You mentioned how much Russell Wilson is getting paid. If he comes out and throws two or three touchdowns, it helps lead four or five touchdown drives, not scoring drives, although field goals count and probably get good cheers here. You know, there was a uh, Play 60, which is the NFL's initiative, right, for getting kids out and doing something 60 minutes a day. So they're doing flag football drills with these kids. And I was like, feels like Brandon McManus and Corliss Waitman will be the most popular most popular <laughs> players here, but we'll see. And it, it looked like it was really fun, and the kids were embracing and learning how to throw. And some had played football before or had picked up a football. Uh, but I digress. You want to see touchdowns. You want to see the offense starting to click. I mentioned Aaron Rodgers. Go back to his first year. Nathaniel Hackett's there as the OC. Matt LaFleur is obviously the head coach. Even though they, they won a lot, and that was the difference. They were 13-3. But Rodgers was not great. Nine games with only one touchdown pass. Two games under 50% com- completion percentage. And only 26 touchdowns. I say only. He was an MVP the next two years. So to say that Russell Wilson is done seems inaccurate. To say that it's a struggle right now totally accurate but he's made a few throws where you're like we haven't seen that around here really maybe since John Elway was here even though Peyton Manning won a lot Jay Cutler's talented Jake Plummer won a lot but some of the the passes that he'll either make or miss we haven't seen quarterbacks capable of those throws and we didn't see with Brett Rippon last week Russell's in a rare category the question is how long does it take for it to all come together and click Mm -hmm. Uh, they say football is a game won in the trenches the D-line has been amazing, really fantastic, um, right across from the interior, outside. The O-line has struggled a little bit. Can the O-line improve enough? Because that's one of the struggles for Russ, is he hasn't, especially on the interior, and that's going to hurt the, the running game a little bit too. Yeah, I think that the loss of Garrett Bowles is pretty devastating. They like how Calvin Anderson projects, especially the left tackle. You remember a couple years ago against Carolina, and I think last year against Dallas, Calvin Anderson has had to step in and play pretty respectably. But then you look, Dalton Reisner's kind of been up and down. I don't know how much of that's his fault. Lloyd Cushenberry, you're not sure long term. If he's the answer, it feels like Luke Wattenberg may end up getting a chance to fight for that job. And then Quinn Miners has just been a health issue, but he's their best offensive lineman. He can maul, he can move, he's good in pass protection. And we know they like Billy Turner. We've seen Billy Turner in a Broncos uniform. We've seen him the last three years with the Packers playing up and down the line. He's one of Coach Hackett's daughter's favorite players. So he was going to get a chance to play. He just needs to settle in. And you want to see some consistency, but you also want to see some push. You want to see them win at the point of attack across the board, and they just haven't been doing that. But hopefully you can get Quinn Miners out in space. You can run the ball, Melvin Gordon or Latavius Murray or even Marlon Mack, if they can get him going. I don't know. I don't know how realistic that is in, in the short term, but he's been here all week. So I think that the O-line has to play better. I feel like they can play better than they are. I'm not saying they're the best offensive line of all time, but we have to see some growth there too. It's going to be an exciting game on Sunday. And Brandon, for people watching or listening to this show uh, in the UK, Ireland, beyond, uh, and you're a Broncos fan or an AFC West fan or an AFC fan or an NFL fan, you can check out Brandon's work. We or a Kansas Jayhawks fan. There you go. <laughs> we will link it in the bio. Um, Big thanks to you for taking the time this morning coming on. Appreciate thanks, your support, guys. man, and uh, enjoy the game on Sunday. This is awesome. Thanks for thanks for having me, UK. Welcome back into the Irish NFL show ahead of the Broncos Jaguars. Sunday, 1.30, Virgin Media, ITV. Uh, or follow us along in the day. I'll be on the uh, feed with my employer. You'll be doing the Irish NFL show Absolutely. feed. Uh, if you see us around, I'll be doing Wembley Way. If you're here at the game on Sunday, give us a shout. Um, game picks. Uh, we'll start off with Brian and Mark. We don't have Brian's pick at the minute, so we'll go with a big question mark, but I'm sure Brian will give us his pick in a bit. Uh, and that's on me, Brian, for not asking you. So that's my bad. Uh, Mark is picking. Mark is picking the Jacksonville Jaguars. Lovely, lovely pick. Uh, Colin. Do I, do I even need to ask you this? Who are you picking on Sunday, man? Uh, you do need to ask me because uh, even though, I mean, this is a huge event, right? The, the Broncos are in London for the first time in 12 years, back at Wembley. Um, anytime a team comes to Wembley, like even though you grew up in Ireland, like the FA Cup 
final, FA Cup semi final. Champions League, everything. Yeah, exactly, right. Ryan Giggs against uh, Ar- Arsenal. <laughs> um, uh, even though that was at, that was at Villa, Villa Park, Park man. Um, the, in the in the re- in the replay. Um, but ev- everything like the 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 romance of the cup, as they say. So Wembley's a big deal, um, and the Broncos being here is a big deal. But the team is isn't playing well currently. Um, I do have concerns about the Jags front seven, definitely. Um, but these are two teams with with kind of similar issues in ways. Um, both very talented QBs, just not performing at the, the level thus far. Um, I I can I can make a case for the Jags winning it, but I'm going to lean into the Broncos. You heard Brandon Cristal earlier talking about the fact that this is the first time this team has been able to get away together without all other people around. The opportunity to bond, the opportunity to come together as a team, and hopefully kind of maybe coalesce around maybe some of the stuff that's been thrown Russell Wilson's way, Nathaniel Hackett's way. It's a very important game. I'm going to say the Broncos get the victory in Wembley. Yeah, Broncos get on Tuesday and we're actually staying at the team hotel and we've seen the players do seem really chilled out and just from chatting to people off record like you're talking about the sort of camaraderie, the positivity. But then people can say that and to be fair it's it's a, the, the sort of balanced viewpoint. People can say that about the Jaguars. The Jaguars will be going into this game looking at a two and five Broncos team going mm-hmm. We'll beat this, or we should be beating this, and the expectation for Peterson and Lawrence at all will be to do that. Uh, they should have beat the Giants last week. The Giants look fair, six and one, fantastic. But for them to get the ball where they were in that in that at the end of the game was mad how they did not win that game. That was insane, and you would think that Lawrence and Peterson will be buoyed from that last week to think right, well we've done this, let's get to this level. Um, the thing that the, that the Giants have done very well is that the blitz defense. Wink Martindale defence so far and it's worked for them through seven weeks of the season uh, I would say the Broncos need to do that on Sunday to get at Trevor Lawrence um, I would be of the I, I feel like this is either going to be a very very slow close game or it's going to be a complete one sided free for all from someone and look there's no point in sugarcoating this um, Nathaniel Hackett needs to win or he's going to be like I, I do not see how he's in a job on Monday if he does not win this game. And that's a personal level, on a professional level. Uh, I hope he's in that job for a long time to come, but you know, I, it's quite clear that the Broncos need to get a win here on Sunday for everyone involved. Um, Jacksonville have changed it around a bit. Running back, obviously Travis Eddie is like a lead guy. Uh, getting rid of James Robinson is an interesting situation. Can Lawrence get the ball downfield to Christian Kirk? How much separation can he actually create? Um, and can they exploit that Broncos defense? Pat Sertain has had a hell of a season so far. <sighs> I would be lynched if I didn't pick the Broncos. Because we're at Wembley. I'm picking the Broncos. That's, I, I, I think Russell Wilson needs a, he needs to win. We spoke to him yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he's he's confident. He seems, uh, seems always confident. Re- ready to go. Uh, let's ride, etc. Uh, I'm picking the Broncos because I think their offense will find a way. But I do think it'll be a low-scoring game. Uh, but you know what great to have the Jaguars back here first time in three years I actually was at the last game here the Jaguars were at and I actually am devastated that Mark's not here to do his uh, what now could be a yearly thing his David Duval moment the, the Duval but uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Jaguars man and thanks to that bus driver for beeping the horn at Colin for his lovely shirt I mean like I mean Broncos Ireland I mean is this the situation? yeah exactly yeah. It's, a, it's a Broncos Ireland uh, shirt and uh, what I will say though Michael is as you say yourself sometimes if the Broncos do not win the game conversations will have to be had so what happened the last time they were in London yeah well yeah exa- exactly uh, that, that is the, <laughs> the, the kind of uh, happening that dare not speak its name and uh, now, the man now coaching the Raiders um, had an, an interesting time Put it that way. Make it home. Anyway, uh, look, uh, if you're going to the game on Sunday, enjoy it. Thanks very much again for watching and interacting with this show. It's much appreciated. Check us out. IRE NFL Show Instagram. Uh, NFL Ireland on TikTok. At IRE NFL on Twitter. Uh, and we're on YouTube. Just search Irish NFL Show. And on podcast format as well. We're back on Monday night. Do give us a shout if you see us at Wembley on Sunday. Enjoy the game, whoever you support. It's going to be a good day.